What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Overdose Vapes. This is Travis, and this is Obese Mode Live, number 112. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having a good Sunday. Uh, I am personally a little bit worse for wear. Um, yeah, feeling a little bit rugged, a little bit rough around the edges. My doctor gave me some different kind of medication. Um, I take like a, I'm on medication for sleeping because I have insomnia really bad. And they gave me something else that really, really messed me up. Really. I slept till 1230 today. And if you know me, that's about five and a half hours longer than I normally sleep uh, in the morning. So uh, what a rough, what a rough day. And all day I've just been fright, fighting this grogginess. Um, suffice it to say, I will not be taking that medication ever again. It's too much for me. Fix it, Dan. What's going on, brother? I got that um, strawberry um, kangaroo custard, courtesy of our boy Fix It Danner. Um, stuff is delicious. Really, really enjoying it. I have it in like two tanks, and two RDAs. Really enjoying it. So uh, I'm going to be talking about that. Um, talking about Jewel and their apologies to <laughs> to parents of teenagers and the whole thing's just a giant mess. Uh, vaping right now is this is that you know this is probably the scariest time to be a vapor that, uh, that I've ever been witness to so um, yeah pretty crazy stuff happening how's everybody else doing how you doing fix a dinner yeah really liking it really really liking it it's got a nice dark color to it love it love it I don't know if I let's see, but here's it's weird because I it doesn't taste to me it doesn't taste like kangaroo custard. I mean I know it's strawberry kangaroo custard, but um, it's it's pretty radically different than regular kangaroo custard. So, um, but I am really liking it. But it's it's like a totally different thing. Normally with like a strawberry custard, if there's already like an established custard, like let's just say um, like a killer custard. When strawberry killer custard came out, it was like, oh, I still taste killer custard in there. You know, you can tell what the base is. Um, these are pretty radically different, this and the regular kangaroo custard. They're pretty different. So, um, but yeah, really enjoying it. Really enjoying it. Vaping it. I'll just start with what I'm vaping. I got my uh, aleolus. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it. Uh, aleolus light um, on the, uh, what the hell is this thing called? I'm so bad with names um, with this mod <laughs> and um, so I'm rocking the uh, strawberry kangaroo custard in there um, vaping the uh, dead rabbit challenge cap and the switch mod also uh, strawberry kangaroo custard I have some fucking vapors rice like a strawberry rice crispy square things uh, in the stack and I also am rocking some Gizzard Brew Strawberry Custard. I have that in the old squonk with the recurve. Not too bad, not too shabby. Liking it, enjoying it. Um, also have the Strawberry uh, Kangaroo Custard in the old Tobacco Super Tank 25 uh, Rebuildable. It's like the third one I've, I've purchased of these tanks. Um, the, it comes with one glass piece and they are extremely fragile. And every single time I've had to repurchase this, it's been because of the glass piece. But I will say this, that if it wasn't for that glass piece uh, being so shit, I would say this is the tank everyone should get. It is absolutely phenomenal. and has some of the best uh, flavor from a tank I've ever had. It's, it's really close to RDA levels of flavor. It's a fantastic tank. You can rock it really low. It, this is not really low. I got 0.18, like at 95 watts. It's a nice, uh, warm, but mellow vape. Um, also using my OBS engine uh, V1 here on my uh, Mage Mech V2, not in stack mode, just regular mode. And uh, yeah, just doing a little bit of vaping. Um, all my pod systems are broken. So I'm doing the same thing I was doing last week, using the Mimic um, pod systems. Um, these come pre-filled with e-liquid but I have just uh, popped the cork out and put my own e-liquid in there. And I am rocking the strawberry killer custard salt 
Um, I will say that I ran into some crazy issues with this mimic pod. Um, and it's not something I think you would normally, um, yeah, it definitely is there. It definitely is. It is, it's pretty substantially different than the original kangaroo custard, um, which is really weird because you would think they would just use kangaroo custard and put some strawberry flavoring in it. But I think there's a little bit something more going on there. Um, but so anyway, so with the mimic pod system thing here, um, you, you know, you buy these batteries, uh, they're, they're great. I love them. I really do. And you buy these uh, little pods that are pre-filled with 6.5 milliliters of e-liquid. And the e-liquids they provide are good. I don't mind them at all. Um, but I wanted to put my own e-liquid in. So they have these little, just little rubber corks in the bottom. You pop them out, blow the e-liquid out, put your own stuff in there. The only problem with that is, is that I found a little glitch um, that if it gets any kind of liquid down in there, see, I can fire this. I'm just touching the little rubber grommet that kind of acts as the firing mechanism because it's like a puff to to activate system right so like there's no button so you just kind of puff it works good the problem was um it's a little rubber grommet that acts on uh, like suction right so i can like fire it with my finger just like kind of tapping it but i also found out if it gets any liquid in there um and when you're refilling these pods there will be some liquid that kind of leaks out around the uh, the plug. Um, if it gets down in there, it can also make it auto fire. So I had one of these things auto fire pretty badly. Um, it has a cutoff, you know, like most uh, regulated mods do, but still it roasted the coil pretty good. And um, not this one, luckily, but the other one that did auto fire also, if you turned it upside down, it would fire. If you just squeezed it the wrong way, it would fire. Um, now that was, I've, I've tried like three different ones of these batteries since then. And while I can get them all to fire with my finger, you know, by tapping the grommet, I can't get, I cannot recreate that, um, the upside down firing or anything like that. So that's good. Um, but it is something to, to be careful of if you are using these mimic pods and you do refill the, the pods, you know, the actual pods themselves with your own e-liquid, be conscious of the fact that I have had an incident where one of these batteries um, auto fired. So yeah, Mathy, what up? How you doing? How's everybody doing? Um, so, you know, touching on some of the stuff we, we talked about last week as far as moving the show to a different time, um, the consensus from people who actually watch the show, people who are here like every week, seems to be, you know, keep it where it is. Um, but if you want to change it, change it. You know, I've had a lot of support. It's been really great. Um, I think for right now, I think we'll just keep it the, where, where it is Sundays, 7 o'clock um, Pacific time. <clears throat> but I, but I do think that in the future, probably in the next few months, we'll, we'll, we'll we're going to do some serious um, thinking on on changing, it. Um, either changing the day or changing the time of day. Um, yeah, yeah. Church, what's going on, brother? How are you doing? Um, but yeah, you know, yeah, pods are such junk. And how you doing? Pew pew bang bang. Um, excellent name as well. Um, pod systems are junk, absolutely junk. And unfortunately, that just seems to be really, really common. The thing about these are like, uh, you know, these aren't really meant to be refilled like per se, right? They make it really easy to refill, but, um, I never had one leak that wasn't refilled. Like when they're, they come pre-filled with, with e-liquid in them, I've never had any of those leak, but as soon as I pop the cork and start filling it myself, I have quite a quite a bit of leaking um but all the other pod systems there are like you know empty pods you fill them uh tons of leaking issues on those tons of leaking issues i don't know what it is specifically about pods that do it but um definitely uh they definitely do so yeah all right um so two weeks from uh today we're gonna have a special guest on the show so stay tuned for more info on that. Um, no problem, ADV. Just got your message. No problem. No worries. Um, so yeah, 28th. Stay tuned for that. We have a special guest. That'll be awesome. Um, tonight, just going to talk a little bit about the uh, Jewel apology to parents, which I think is that's a scary sign of the times, if nothing else, right? And um, kind of where I stand on that. And I think that 
Well, let's just get let's get right into this. I think so. Jewel, if you haven't seen, Jewel came out. Um, so there's a, there's an article here on, here on the hill. There's articles everywhere. This is just like one of the most recent ones I saw. And Jewel Lab CEO Kevin Burns apologized to parents of teenagers in a new documentary for the vaping. They put it in quotes themselves on the hills, which is good. Epidemic that has hit high schools across the country. I'd tell parents, I'd tell parents of teenagers that I'm sorry that their that their ch- uh, child's using the product. Burns told CNBC's Carl Quint- Quintanilla in the documentary "Vaporized: America's E-Cigarette Addiction," which premieres Monday. Um, it's not intended for them. This is a continuing the quote from Burns, CEO of uh, Jewel. It's not intended for them. I hope there was nothing that we did that made it appealing to them. He says, as a parent of a 16 year old, I'm sorry for them. And I have empathy for them in terms of what the challenges they're going through. Uh, Burns added that the vaping, that vaping's effect on Juul users is still not definitively known, even for minors, the product and cigarettes can contain cancer causing chemicals, according to the CDC. For, this is Burns again. Frankly, we don't know today we have not done the long-term, long-term, longitudinal uh, clinical testing that we need to do. In December 2018, Advisory Surgeon General Jerome Adams called vaping among U.S. teenagers an epidemic, in quotes again, between 2011 and 2015, is cigarette usage among middle school uh, students increased 900% and increased 78, 78% between 2017 and 2018, according to the advisory. Jewel Labs, best-selling e-cigarette brand, pulled uh, popular sweet flavors like mango, cucumber, and fruit from shelves last year in an effort to stem uh, teenage vaping. Uh, there's so much to unpack on this this article, which we will. We're gonna get there. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a rundown on it. It also shut down its Facebook and Instagram accounts after being accused by critics of marketing to teens. Jewel co-founder Adam Bowen said the company's initial ads, which featured bright colors and young models, were inappropriate. When we launched Jewel, we had a campaign that was arguably too kind of lifestyle oriented, too flashy. It lasted less than six months. It was in the early days of the product introduction. We think it had no impact on sales. Uh, Jewel Labs has purchased several full page advertisements warning about the risks of youth vaping. Okay, so there's a lot to talk about. Um, um, they're not Jules doing this because they're they are in the in the crosshairs of the uh, of the federal government, right? They have specifically said, Jewel, if you do not curb teen vaping, um, we're going to shut you down. You know, um, which is funny because the government in power right now is um, to the right of the political spectrum here in the United States, and I've always heard that um, capitalism. Is came here and the market figures itself out. So it's it's so funny to see the uh, federal government getting involved on like a per business level. Like we're going to affect this one business, not just vaping as a whole, but this specific business. It's a little bit crazy. Um, the whole them pulling the flavors to 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 stem teen, teen vaping. Um, first off, most Joel flavors they all taste exactly the same. Pot, that's that's one of the things about high nick. Um, pod vaping it's not a very flavorful experience anyways and in no way is that going to discourage a kid who wants to vape from vaping um just like when i was a kid and i wanted to smoke smoke i wasn't smoking because of marlboro's um creme brulee flavor no there was just a marlboro right it's, it's about the act itself it has nothing to do with the flavors the flavors are much more a part of keeping um vapors like us engaged in it, um, keeping us um, buying new products. It's just a, it's, it's a way to um, encourage more consumerism. I mean, I, honestly, um, because if it was just all tobacco flavors, we would probably vape for a while to quit smoking and then quit. You know, it's like introducing more, it's just my opinion, it's introducing more flavors, introducing new products. It's a way to keep people engaged in it. And of course, I prefer flavors. I think everyone prefers flavors, right? This is not like a teenagers are the only ones who enjoy things that taste good. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so the, the reason why this strikes me as being disingenuous is because honestly, this has nothing to do with the way Jewel really thinks about, um, yep, you got it, ADV. This has nothing to do with the way Jewel really thinks about the industry. This has to do everything with Jewel being afraid of being shut down. Um, 
So uh, I'm, it just concerns me when we have the, when this is the headline, Jewel is apologizing. It just makes it seem like they did something wrong. And in no way do we have proof of that. Right. Uh, but they're kind of like just admitting right away. Like, Oh yeah, we, we definitely did something wrong. I apologize. Um, when, Hey, I'm not, you're not the biggest fan of Jewel. Right. But like vaping is, is also getting caught up in the crosshair of this whole ordeal. So um, apologizing preemptively like this, I just don't, I don't, I don't know personally what that does except for admitting um, that you did something wrong. And um, I, I don't think, I don't think that they specifically did, you know, call me crazy. Um, pulling the flavors, another thing, like I don't, I don't get how that helps the situation at all. So flavorless ice cream. Or something. Yeah, me too. Up, up, man. Me too. I, I just don't get how flavor, like pulling flavors. What does that do? What, do, what does that do? Um, how does that curb, like, show me hard evidence that that has had an effect on vaping from teens. I, I just don't buy it. And the whole time frame they gave, that was another thing that really bothered me. The whole time frame they gave, like, 2011 to 2015, teen vaping increased by 900%. Guess what? Vaping in general increased by, by 10,000% during that time because that's when people started learning about vaping. Um, vaping became much more popular starting around 2009. Um, I started about 2011. So I was part of that initial surge of people who discovered vaping and went with it, right? Um, but first off, so that has nothing to do with Juul because Juul wasn't a part of the industry in 2011. And um, and yeah, okay, so there, there probably was a surge in teen vaping because there was just a surge in vaping hard stop that's it They're just people started vaping um so that that, that whole statistic is, is, is irrelevant to the conversation that they're trying to have in this article and then then to, to kick back and say um then during 2007 17 to 2018 it increased by 76 percent um again i think there's this whole new wave of pod systems and i do think that that had a definite increase in the market during those time, kind of time periods between 2017 and now, um, pods and um, salt neck has kind of taken over the industry in a lot of ways. So that would also, I think, account just for this increased, uh, you know, usage of vaping in general, not just amongst teens. And I would really like to see the whole statistics there, not just this is how much it has increased during amongst teens, but how much has it increased overall? How much has the industry grown during that time? Because I really, I wager to say that um, the use amongst adults has been more than that, than what they quoted for teens. So, yeah, um, just really conflicted about the whole thing. Part of me when I first saw it, because I actually saw something pop up on my phone and it was like a jewel ad, but it was like, we're sorry. <laughs> and I'm like, what? For what? For making a terrible product? You're forgiven, right? But then it's like this whole thing about you know, we're sorry if your teens are vaping, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what the hell is going on? So I went and looked this up and I'm really conflicted about it because part of me at first was kind of like, oh, you know, what, you know, it's a good way to like get in front of this story. But then the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh man, that's, you're admitting defeat. You're admitting wrongdoing, you know, um, long before there's any reason to. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what your guys' thoughts on it are. I know Jewel is kind of like the pariah, not just in the uh, wider community, but specifically in the vape community, people hate Jewel. And um, my problem with Jewel is definitely what it, what their overall uh, impact has been on the industry um, and the heat that it's brought on us more than anything else. Um, Jewel, as a product, I, I could care, I, you know, I don't care about. It just wasn't ever, it was never something that I thought was relevant to me or my taste. You know, I've had a jewel that someone, you know, uh, gave me and um, I never like bought a jewel pod or anything. I just used it with refillable pods, but um, it was just a pod, you know, like, I, I don't know. I just, it was only later that I learned that like, hey, jewel has like this giant market share, like this huge um, share of, of the industry is jewel. So. Um, so I kind of get why the, a lot of it is focused on them, but at the same time, um, that's why it is um, so much more important for them to 
be careful about what how they present this you know like i don't know kind of a rage article yeah totally uh, i do like there's a couple of things they did right here um by calling you know by putting in quotations the word epidemic when discussing like you know uh, the vaping epidemic that has hit high school students i mean that's that's good because the, that is at least um kind of prefacing the whole idea by saying this is being called an epidemic we're not calling it an epidemic so you know good on the hill for doing that uh, the hill is not something that i like read a lot but um it was just like i said it was like the, the closest article that i had um there's some from usa today cnbc the Atlantic, Vox, Forbes, everyone's doing, you know, Axios, everyone's doing articles on this right now, um, which is scary for me. It really is. It's really scary because um, vaping is something that's important to me. And um, it's scary that Juul is the, the mouthpiece for vaping. Um, it's scary that vaping is under so much um, outside pressure. And so much uh, speculation from outside. Shane Smith, what's going on, brother? Um, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of freak, just kind of freaking out a little bit about um, about it in general. You know, at the beginning of the year, I said this is going to be the year that you know makes or breaks vaping. And so far, it's it looks like it's breaking us more than anything. So, redneck vapor, what's going on, brother? Um, you know, YouTube. Uh, you know, another thing that I I hate being right. But um, I said, you know, the first thing that, that they'll do is is to try to silence um, any kind of vaping media, like, you know, things like YouTube specifically. And while they haven't did like a, a big purge like they did last year, they have demonetized them. So um, that is like the first step, right? Demonetization. Um, and... Um, Next will come, you know, deplatforming, and, and I truly believe that um, within the next year, um, we're going to start to see more and more channels as a whole just taken off the platform of YouTube, specifically. Yeah, things are crazy right now, it, and I and I think it's just going to get crazier. Um, I think the FDA will try to at some point step in, um, or even scarier than the, than like a federal um, kind of uh, issue, right? Like if, if the feds came in and just said, uh, we're going to shut it down, state by state could still um, keep things alive. I think scarier than a federal ban is the state by state or, or even, you know, like county by county ban. Things like the San Francisco flavor, flavor ban. Um, my local, you know, uh, Mendocino County where I live, local vape shop owners said they got visited by the health department and they said they're going to try to do something in Mendocino County specifically just to eliminate vaping. Um, those are the kind of scary things because um, what do you do then? Right? Like, how do you, how do you get help? How do you, how do you organize um, a way to fight back when it's on such a small scale? San Francisco has been able to, to unable to do it. And they're a huge, metropolitan city. Uh, Mendocino County, our biggest city has like 30,000 people, you know, so, and I mean, a, a fraction of the people vape, so, and how many of those people who vape are like passionate enough about it to actually go fight for vaping, you know, so it's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, so Pixie Danner, uh, you're right, you know, there's a lot of BS gets read about vaping, um, from the weirdest places too, right? Like we always, we always thought it was gonna be like big tobacco that came after us, and big, big, big tobacco just bought into it, which is which is smart for them, you know. It's it just makes sense for them to try to buy into it instead of you know squashing it. Um, but we've had all these other people, you know, like a partnership for tobacco free uh, California or whatever. All these different weird organizations have come and really tried to. Uh, put a stop to what we're doing, and um, it's a shame. It's a, it's just a really big shame. Yeah, in the United States as a whole, um, it's. I, I'm surprised. I guess I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know why I'm surprised, but I, I am surprised that the United States is so far behind um, other places. You know, it looked like the UK for a while, 
um, was going to be the ones who kind of got shut down, but they put those rules in place, um, the TTP, or I think that's what it's called. And um, they've been thriving, you know, like things have moved forward and uh, people just abide by those rules and they're crazy rules, but it works, right? Like uh, two mil tanks, you know, 10 mil bottles of <laughs> nicotine. It, it's been working for them. And so um, Josh Vapes, how you doing, brother? Um, I'm sorry, that's awful. Yeah, it's really, really awful. Um, it, looks, it looks like that's the way they're going to go. Is it like just town by town? They're going to be banning flavors. Oh, we got a baby crying. We got a baby crying. Oh, my God. My neighbors have a baby and it cries. Sorry. Um, yeah, you know, uh, vaping is just up against the wall right now. And, and it's more important than ever um, to really like reach out to not just your senators and your Congress people. But like reach out to people in your town, right? Like like uh, local city government, um, local businesses, you know, like be the, be the change you want to see, right? Like uh, go and give, you know, go and educate people. Um, go and show people that vaping is not some kind of fringe, you know, weirdo group of hippies out, you know, smoking their robot sticks, you know, um, show them what is normal people. Um, it's important. Wow, that's amazing, Matthew. That's amazing. Other parts of the other parts of the world are just so far ahead of us. Um, even the UK, like I was saying, the UK, who, who like for a little while looked like they were going to just try to stop vaping. They've really embraced it, and they put the rules in place, and people follow those rules, you know, pretty well, you know, or get around them in really, in, you know, unique ways, and then um, it just kind of got accepted, you know, and so it's crazy. Yeah, it's all about money here. Yeah. Unfortunately. Not gonna vape. And of course I'm vaping the fucking pod system. Cause I'm an idiot. And then we have, you know, our own worst enemy is us sometimes. And um, look what happened, you know with this product here, strawberry um, custard from, from uh, Giz and, um, and somebody called the FDA and, um, and put a stop to this from happening. You know what I mean? Um, it's Vivian Swag gets a call or gets a letter from the FDA saying, Hey, we heard you're releasing a new flavor. Stop. It. You know, somebody had to call them or write a letter or, or email or something. Someone had to notify them, you know? It's just so, so sad that we're, that instead of being supportive of each other, and if, instead of trying to grow this industry under such oppression that we use, use the powers that be to do our bidding and to hurt the people that we don't like or hurt the people who are competition to us. It's sad, it's really sad. Yeah, so Church, um, David Lombard, what's happening? Um, so Church brings up a really good point. We've talked about this ad nauseum, but um, there's a lot of money in treating people's sicknesses, and there's not a lot of money in curing people's sicknesses, right? So, um, or, or just in healthy people in general. That's why a lot of insurances won't cover uh, preemptive medical things like uh, like nutritionists or um just different things that are going to keep you healthy, right? Your insurance is only going to kick in like once you're already sick. And um, I think that a big part of this is definitely um, coming from the weirdest places, places like, um, you know, uh, big pharmaceutical companies who see vaping as a giant risk, uh, a giant, uh, a giant knife in their industry of treating cancer. And um, they're scared of that. They're really scared of that. So. I think most of Antifa teams. <laughs> oh my goodness. Come on. Come on. That's the kind of stuff that gets spread around. I think most of the Nazi party vapes as well. 
So Nazis and and uh, so one thing that Nazis and Antifa have in common is that uh, they both vape. So there we go. Let's just spread that around. Um, so what's everybody vaping on? You know, let's 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 enjoy this while we can. How about that? See, one good thing about uh, Jewel, this article that Jewel, um, they're writing about Jewel, is that Jewel is saying in this article, hey, we want more studies done, right? Like, uh, that's why they should have never apologized to anything, you know, because um, really, they, they should just say, let's do some long-term studies on this stuff, right? Like, let's see what the long-term effects of vaping are before we start you know, throwing rocks at people. And um, and I, I hope that can happen. And Owen, oh, what's happening, brother? Um, I hope that can happen. I hope that um, science gets a chance to prove that vaping is less harmful than smoking. We'll see. Can only be one. Ooh, that's a good one. I actually have some can only be one right over on the bill table right now. It is steep perfection and it's a wonderful, wonderful flavor. I don't know what the Vena RDA is though. That's that sounds awesome. Oh, there's another uh, ad in here, another ad, another article in here that really kind of scares me. It says um, it's from December of last year. It says how social media hyped nicotine for a new generation. That's from uh, Chicago's WGN TV. Um, I'm part of that social media. <laughs> Am I hyping uh, nicotine for a new generation? That's a little scary. Um, so I, I I really think that um, most social media that I see. You know, being included in that, um, most of it is definitely geared towards adults. Um, I see very few social media accounts where it's like geared towards the younger set, right? Um, there was a young guy on YouTube uh, for a while who I kind of felt like was bad for vaping. I don't know if he's still on YouTube. He would, like blew up really fast. Um, everybody was talking shit about him for a while. Um, nobody even like knew how old he was and shit, right? I can't remember what his name was, but. Um, I kind of felt like that was a bad look for us. Um, some of the sexualization of vaping on places like Instagram is kind of iffy. You know, is that pulling in younger guys? But I think that's just sex sells in general. So, okay, let's see what everybody else has been on. Oh, I fixed it down. I got the drop solo with two vertical captains. That is a tight fit. Single coil RDA, 22 millimeter. Oh, Call me old fashioned, but I'm always gonna love the 22 mil RDAs. That's why the Aeolus light always has a place in my rotation. 22 mil is what I what I grew up on, <laughs> what I vaped up on, right? And um, it just has that dense flavor that I'm always gonna love. Fantastic. Not that you can't get good flavor from a 24 or 25 mil RDA, but I'm always gonna be a 22 mil guy at heart. Uh, single coil is all right, but I like, give me, a, give me a dual coil. Fantastic. What are you locals are you guys vaping on? Come on everybody, tell me what you're vaping on. Here's a, here's a good fucking article right here in New York Magazine. I don't agree with it still because I, I do think that people are old enough to make, once you're an adult, you're old enough to make your own decisions. But this is a good headline, at least. Instead of Juul, San Francisco should have banned cigarettes. This is from June 26th, June 26th of this year. Um, you know, like, why are we having more conversations like that? I don't know. I just... The media always gets it so fucking wrong. It just pisses me off. Okay, so here we go. Owen's got an SMPL mod. Oh man, one of the first mechanical mods that I bought that was like authentic was an SMPL. It bit the dust so fucking long ago though. And the Twisted Mess is V1. Ooh, that is Flavor Town. Seven wrap, dual coils, 2.5 millimeter on the drop. Alter Ego is the juice, 5150, Oreo cookie spot on. That's from Tups 24. Awesome. Fix It Danner's got that monster fruit, strawberry, kiwi, pomegranate. What do you think about it, though? 
because I actually really like that. That's the video I'm working on right now is the strawberry kiwi pomegranate from uh, Juice Monster. Dreamer stack with art with Adrent DIY chocolate ice cream. Ooh, chocolate's tough. I've tried a couple different chocolate recipes. Never been real happy with them. Never been really happy with them. Chocolate always comes across a little bit either bitter or waxy, kind of like American chocolate. Uh, I've, I've not, yeah, I haven't had a lot of good chocolates. Uh, Charlie Noble had a chocolate chip cookie that was fantastic. But when the uh, the rule change came, uh, came into play, right, and they were going to start getting, like, taxed or, or they were going to have to, like, uh, pay – to get every one of their their SKUs um, approved by the FDA, they took a lot of their flavors off of the market, and that chocolate chip cookie was called Good Cookie, um, got taken down, and that was a shame because that was a killer killer e liquid, good chocolate too, like one of the only really good chocolates I've ever had. Yeah, Fruit Monster, man. Big surprise. I was really surprised by that Fruit Monster. Uh, I will say that if if you're familiar with Jam Monster, you're probably gonna you're probably gonna be okay with the Fruit Monster. Um, it's it's got a nice sweetness to it, and it does have that jamminess to it as well. Like for me, when I was making that Fruit Monster strawberry kiwi pomegranate, the number one flavor was that strawberry jam flavor that they use in their normal e liquid. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe that's what I like expected, but that's what I got. So, but yeah, so um, that's why the name of this um, episode was No Apologies because it's just like I'm so conflicted on um, what Jewel's doing. And, you know, I'm sure they're doing what they think is best for their business, which they should. You know, that's how business works. Um, but is it what we need as a, you know, as a whole for the industry? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Duchess Reserve. Mm. Profile RDA. Um, so I did a trade with our boy ADV, and I am getting a TVL Colt 45 uh, mechanical mod, which I've always wanted one. And what was the – they sent me an RTA as well. I can't remember the name of it. But it's one that's been around for a while. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, the Pulse 80 watt, the profile, excellent. Duchess Reserve. That sounds. I like the name. What is what is Duchess Reserve? Kings Crest Duchess Reserve. What is that? So Victor Danner says he likes it. This is talking about the Fruit Monster. Uh, first time he's made kiwi or pomegranate is better than the mango, mango peach guava. Peach still tastes like pickles to me. Yeah, peach is tough, man. Peach is a tough flavor to nail it with vaping. Um, I haven't actually tried the mango peach guava yet, so um, now I know what to expect. Um, but yeah, I did really like the the, the uh, strawberry kiwi pomegranate. The kiwi and the pomegranate are real light. Like they're really really light. It's mostly just freaking strawberry. Sin in, what's happening? How are you? Didn't expect to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're well. Hope everything's good. Are you naked? Oh no. She's dressed. All the way naked. My skin. Ooh, blackberry iced tea. That sounds good. I got the recurve going on too. So, Tups, I have not tried Twist. I've seen a lot of the advertisements for it, but I have not tried it. Oh, Matthew, you got to get a tube. You got to get a tube mod. It's all about it. So, yeah. Duchess Reserve is Trace, Lead Shade, Marshmallow, and Butterscotch. That sounds delicious. There's um, CBD, um, God System. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
You can't really bid that on YouTube. I know. I just want to bid it. I put it on the review on Instagram. There you go. Yeah, so, uh, Mappy, if you're looking for a good tube mod, um, there's so many good options out there for a good price right now. Um, the Dreamer is good if you're for a good, I think it's a good priced mod, and most people love it. I'm not crazy about it. Trinity, Trinity has great mechanical mods for the same price, yeah, for about 150 US, um, and they're awesome, awesome mods. They have the 2700, 21, no, the 2700 version and the 18650 versions. Um, the US ones, they're amazing, absolutely. My favorite <clears throat> just strawberry e-liquid. I don't think I have any favorite just strawberry e-liquids. I really don't. Vape in life with Vapen Jason. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Um, just strawberry. No, I don't vape. I can't, can't even think of any just strawberry. Well, tons of people make just strawberry ones. No. The Vindicator, yeah, that's a good one. The Unicorn Mech. Uh, my favorite, man, the mech mod that I want the most is the Glass Mechanical Mod. The company who makes e-liquid and stuff, they also make mechanical mods and they're absolutely fantastic. Unicorn Incorporated Mod 2700 is the bomb. I'll take a look at that. I'm, I'm so into tubes. I love tube mods so much. I'm really looking forward to getting this TVL Colt 45 that I got in a trade with uh, ADV. I've been wanting one of those for so long. And actually, instead of getting that, uh, back in the day, I was going to get, I've been thinking, because I knew there was, it was down to two mods. And I kept thinking it was like the Dreamer, but it wasn't. What it was was, because uh, I don't have it anymore. So I, I, I kept forgetting that I had it. Um, I was going to either get the Colt 45, because I had uh, a guy from TVL had given me a code for like a really big discount. So I was going to get it for under $100. Like it was going to be like around $90. Either the Colt 45, or at the time, um, uh, Rig had just released the Rig V3. And I also had a code for that, and it brought it around to about the same price. I think the Rig was like about $5 more, about $95. And I ended up going with the Rig V3 because I really I really liked the Rig V2. Um, I didn't have one at the time, but I would used it, and I loved it, right? And the Rig V1, awesome mods. So I got the Rig V3 and um, hated it, absolutely hated it. Um, regretted that decision every day, every day that I had that mod. I eventually traded that uh, mod for the Switch mod, which I like a lot. Um, but I've, I've always kicked myself in the ass for not getting that TVL Colt 45 when I had the opportunity. Um, so I'm really, really happy to be getting one now. Man, just cannot wait to get it. James Rivera, what's happening, brother? I'll check it out. Shane, I'll check it out. Thanks. Unicorn, huh? Nice. I'll check it out right now. Excuse my loud keyboard. Looks like vaping, vaping bogan. No, that's RDA. Unicorn vapes twenty one seven hundred stack mech mod. MDX three one three and one kit mod plus RDA. Is that what it is? Brass unicorn. Is it from MDX mod? Is that the ones? It is Shane. Let me check it out. Oh, this has got to be it. It has a picture. This one has a picture of a unicorn on it. NDX big logo, three in one white brass kit. Three in one stack sections, brass switch upgrades, knurled copper, matte black, copper, knurled, rainbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, man, looks dope. 
Damn, did you get that? Let's, you know what? Let's look at this. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. There it is. Okay, let's take a look at this. Boom. The bastard V2. Look at that shit. Oh my God. On sale right now for $84.99. There's only nine of them left. So anybody wants this, I do not have the money for it. So you guys grab it up. Single piece stack mod. Oh my God. Includes 26 millimeter Unicorn RDA with ups, upscaled air holes at 2.5 millimeter. Bastard dog tags. Carry case. 30T recommended batteries. Uh, doesn't come with those batteries. That's just what they recommend. And I also recommend those are the best batteries for mechanical mods. $84.99 right now for that whole setup. 58% off. That's fucking crazy. What a good deal. Got different upgrades here for your springs. Different brass switch upgrades these are good deals man let's check out something like this rainbow kit big logo while they're having big sales right now you guys 84.99 looks like this is the price the price du jour all their mods right now 84.99 60 percent off look at that beauty wow that is a killer deal You guys are looking for a good mod. It looks like that is the mod to get right now. Wow. All right. You know, so Shane said that uh, Kimmy has a code, uh, Kimmy Vape 20. But man, it looks like right now like they're having much deeper discounts than that. It looks like they're like fifty between fifty and sixty percent off. I think all their mods right now are eighty four ninety nine. So um, if anybody's interested in a mech tube. That might be the one to get. Shane Smith likes it. Looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. If that code works with, if Kimmy Vape's code works on top of what they're already on sale for, that would be a killer fucking deal. But again, if they're already having sales, I don't know for sure if the Kimmy Vape's uh, code's going to work already, you know, like since they're already having a sale. But check it out. I mean, maybe, hell, maybe you can get it for, yeah, 60 bucks. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. So there you go. Maffy, been looking for a mod, man. I grab one of those. The, those look beautiful. Shane likes them. So they, they work good. Get them for a steal. Yeah, ArkansasEliquid.com. That's, that's where it was for sure. So yeah, if anybody wasn't here in the beginning, um, Man, I have had a terrible day. So my doctor gave me some kind of crazy medication. Um, I have insomnia, like really bad. Like I sleep maybe two or three, four, four hours a night, you know, if I'm lucky. Um, you should be all right. I'm sure they should be. I didn't check, but you can check them out at least. Um, <clears throat> so I have terrible time sleeping. Uh, even when I do sleep, I wake up like every hour. I, like I, it's just hard for me to stay asleep. Um, so I, I was taking this one medication that was working pretty well. Um, it, it helped to keep me asleep mostly, um, but it didn't make me feel groggy the next day. Um, but I ran out of that and I just didn't have it's Sunday. So the pharmacy's closed or Saturday that it was closed. Right. Um, and so I had some other medication he had given me in the past that I never took because I was unsure of it. Right. I don't like taking medication if I don't have to, but I, I haven't been sleeping because I've been out of my medication. So um, I took some of this medication he gave me a while ago and um, it just really knocked my dick in the dirt. And I slept until like 1230 today, which is about five and a half hours, um, which is about five and a half hours longer than I normally sleep. What I normally take, um, James Rivera, what I normally take is a, um, it's called Trazodone. It's like actually something they use for like it's like a psych med ring, um, but they use it for sleeping as well. Um, and it's it's a mellow, it's light. Like I don't, it doesn't make me feel anything. It just kind of helps me stay asleep. Part of it might just be uh, we call it like the placebo effect, but it, it doesn't work for me. This other stuff they gave me. God, let me grab it. It's kind of,
So he gave, me, he gave me this a long time ago. It's a liquid. It's called doxepin hydrochloride. And um, it's 10 milligrams. I remember he said to take like 70 milligrams or some crazy shit like that. So that would be like um, 10 milligrams per milliliter. So that would be like seven milliliters. So I tried like, how much is in I might have just overdone it or something. So no. So this is 25 milligrams for each squirt. So, so it's three milliliter. So it's almost three milliliters per dropper. And he told me to take like five of those. I took two dropper fulls and a cup of water and drank it last night before bed. And I slept until 1230 today. And I, and I went to sleep about uh, midnight, 1230, something like that. So about 12 hours. And um, it was awful. And I, and I felt so out of sorts all day. And um, that's why I don't like normally taking sleeping medicine. That's why I don't take Ambien, any of that shit, because I just can't handle the next day. Um, for the longest time, I just took Benadryl, you know, because Benadryl makes you kind of feel sleepy, but um, it doesn't really make you feel groggy the next day. So, yeah, this stuff's awful. Seroquel, um, Seroquel is what um, a lot of people have taken. I can't take Seroquel. It's too strong for me. Um, Seroquel works for a lot of people. It does not work for me. Um, Trazodone works for me really well. Uh, I take, I don't even take a whole one. Uh, so give me like these 150 milligram. And they come in little trapezoids, which is weird, right? The weirdest shaped medicine I've ever seen. And I just break off like one piece. It's like three pieces, right? And um, so 50 milligrams. I think about 50 milligrams of trazodone every night. And uh, what happened was because of that, one bottle of trazodone will last me for like three months. So my prescription refill just ran out. So I went to like refill it. And I'm like, oh, it's expired it's like uh, with the fax your doctor so it's been waiting for them to do that the yeah, ambient is I, it's just too much for me way too much yeah um yeah antihistamines yeah definitely help um i i can take we have like a really you know benadryl is cheap as dirt from like walmart or something so i think like 50 milligrams of that or 35 milligrams that works pretty well too um but ever since I've been taking this trazodone, it doesn't work as well. Um, but I'm definitely never taking this again. This is this is going out because this is this is awful. I feel I was I was sitting on the couch talking to, to Maria earlier, and I like fell asleep and like my whole body jumped. It's crazy. She's like, "Oh my god, you're all right," and it's because I was still my body was just still asleep. You know, it's crazy. What's up? I didn't know you were a midget. Oh, you sure those babies were a I don't know. How long have I put up with you? Put up with you. Yeah, um, so one of the reasons why I can't take Ambien, because I actually, I was so, there was like a six-month period, if you guys remember. I assume you guys probably remember. There was like a six-month period where I, I didn't sleep. I mean, I'm not talking about like, oh, I didn't sleep a lot. I didn't sleep. Like, I slept like 15 minutes, 20 minutes here, there, you know, it was just like, I was walking around in a freaking haze. It was, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. It was to the point where I was going to the doctor and telling him, I want Ambien. I want, I want to sleep a whole night. I hadn't slept a whole night in so long that I was like, I was like crying. It was, it was a really dark period. It was really sad. You know, it made me feel bad. It made me feel awful. Um, yeah, you know, the thing about Kratom is uh, we actually tried Kratom before. Oh, I, and um, it's just, it's just um, Kratom can work really well. Um, if you have a history of opiate addiction, it can also, um, I don't know, it's it's kind of, I've, some some parts about it are good, some parts about it are bad. You take Kratom over a long period of time, you can get, a, you can get like a dependence on it and stuff. So it's just, Kratom is one of those things, you know, to, to be careful with, I think. But uh, so I went to the doctor, told him, you know, I wanted Ambien, uh, but I also have a history of sleepwalking. If you have a history of sleepwalking, the doctors will not give you Ambien <laughs> um, because it can actually make you uh, sleepwalk worse. And I didn't know that. And I'm glad that he told me that. But looking back on it now, um, I couldn't have, I couldn't take it anyway. You know, it's just, 
absolutely could not take it. Um, I, I don't, I do not like feeling like I, I can't wake up and be awake in the moment right now. Um, I hate that feeling. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we've tried we've tried some of the Kratom, what the hell was it called? It's one of the red varieties and um, it worked okay. I've tried a lot of natural stuff. CBD is, works okay for me, um, but it, it can't be just pure CBD. It has to be CBD with some THC as well because um, otherwise the CBD just doesn't do anything at all. Um, uh, I've, tried, I've tried all the natural stuff, uh, melatonin, all that stuff. I tried everything, and uh, my problems is on a different level. I think, not to minimize other people's problems, but um, I just I'm I have real picky means, right? Because um, stuff that is really light that normally would be fine doesn't work well enough for me. But stuff that works really well, I, I can't handle the after effects of it. So I'm I'm a little bit like um, uh, well, a little bit like um, the Three Bears. What the, what the hell's their name? That that uh, old fable. You know, uh, all the porridge is, is wrong. This one's too hot. This one's too cold. <laughs> I'm really picky. Uh, but I I have to be able to wake up in the middle. If something happens, something pops off, somebody comes in through my fucking front door at 3 o'clock in the morning, I want to be able to be awake right now and be totally in, in control of my faculties. And the way that I woke up today, I can't even say this morning, but this afternoon, um, I was not in control of my faculties. And uh, that was after 12 hours of sleep. Can't handle that. I hate that feeling. So, yeah, and all, yeah, and awful dreams. Yeah, ambience that can also increase dreams. Uh, I've been having a lot of crazy dreams lately, too. Like, when I, even when I do take my normal medication, it definitely increases the dreams that I have. Um, I've, I've gotten pretty desperate lately. Uh, Goldilocks, that's what it is. Boom, Goldilocks. How did I forget that? Um, I've gotten pretty desperate lately. Obviously, I, I was desperate because I took this stupid medication last night. Um, but that's just because I've gotten so used to getting um, predictable sleep. Not, not necessarily good sleep. Transodone doesn't give me good sleep. Okay, I get decent sleep. I get, you know, between four hours and, and six hours of sleep. Six hours is probably being too generous. I get about four hours of, of decent sleep every night but it's predictable, right? Like I know I'm getting that amount of sleep every night. Um, I kind of got too accustomed to that. And so when I, all of a sudden when I was, did not have my trazodone, uh, it freaked me out and I was not getting predictable sleep. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Matthew. So um, I haven't, that's another thing is I stopped smoking pot and that was right around the time that I started having I've always had really big sleep issues. I'm a former, I'm a former addict of methamphetamines, and so um, I'm just not like a big secret or anything. I've, I've told this story thousands of times, but so I used to do meth. Meth does makes you stay awake, right, for days and days and days and days. It's an upper. Um, and so for about ten years, I didn't sleep, like legitimately didn't sleep, like was awake for days and days at a time doing meth. When I got clean off of that, which had been over ten years ago. Um, I've, I've struggled with sleep problems since then, um, but I smoked pot and, you know, smoking pot really helped me, um, to kind of mellow out at night to get to sleep. Um, not to stay asleep, but, um, to get to sleep, but, um, then I stopped smoking pot and that, that really, um, aggravated my sleep issues in a pretty major way. Um, if, if they, you know, if they would give me Xanax, I would probably take them for sleep because it definitely does help me sleep. But Xanax is another, it's like opening up a whole other issue of addiction, you know? Um, and most of the doctors around here are pretty sketchy about giving anything like Xanax or any kind of benzodiazepine or anything like that. So, Hey, thanks. Yeah, no, um, I ate my way to recovery. So, <laughs> um, like I said, I've, I've been, I've been clean off meth for over 10 years and um, I, Okay. I gained about a hundred pounds 
since I uh, <laughs> stopped using meth, so it's not always the best. Um, I haven't tried CBD. Yeah, no, I've tried CBD. Um, but again, the CBD didn't really work as well if it was just like CBD isolated 100%, no THC. If it's got like a really low THC content to it with CBD, uh, which you can get now here in California because it's all legal, um, it works really well. You know, it works really, really well. That's something I just got to get. Yeah, no, um, the thing about Xanax and any kind of benzodiazepines, people who need them, it's like a life-saving drug for them. It's the difference between being able to function in society and not being able to function in society. Um, but people who abuse them, abuse them to the max. And so it's one of those, it's one of those really, um, yeah, like people who need them don't really get high off them. And um, so it's one of those things. I did really enjoy it. So this company, it's a, it's it happened right around the time that I got my strike on my channel last year when everybody was getting the strikes and people were losing their channels. Um, I got a strike for doing a review on a CBD product. At that same time, a company had sent me a bunch of CBD products to review. So I couldn't review them on the channel, um, but I still had like a dozen different CBD products. And um, there was like a flavorless one that I gave to my coworker for her dog which worked great for a dog. And I tried them as well and it worked really well. It worked really, really well for me. Shane, Godspeed brother, see you later. And that's the problem, uh, Sen, a lot of medications make me feel wobbly, uh, definitely. All right, um, you know what, everybody, I just took time. I'm with Shane, I gotta get off of here too. Um, much love to everybody. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you didn't catch the whole show, go watch the, the replay, please. Um, review is going to be coming up tomorrow. Uh, I've been working on it all week. Um, my hours are just crazy, but, um, yeah, I got a review coming up for the strawberry kiwi, um, pomegranate fruit monster the, from the new range of, uh, of fruit monster e-liquids from jam monster. It's going to be really good. And, um, yeah, much love you guys. Um, you keep being awesome, Fix It Danner. Josh Rapes, thanks for joining us. If you guys don't know, Josh Rapes has a YouTube channel and an Instagram. Go check him out. I follow him on Instagram and on YouTube. So why don't you go check him out? You can do it too. Um, yeah. Maffy, later. Church, later. Thank you guys so much. Uh, much love to everybody. Thanks to my awesome patrons. Um, I don't see, I don't think they're here today, but um, much love to you guys as well. And um, yeah. Good night, everybody. Peace out.